1995, Porsche wanted to get involved in the BPR Global GT series. They were already involved in the series, but were competing with a 993 GT2, which although was a phenomenal car to race, was not much of a match for the likes of the F1 or the F40 LM. So they decided to spend the time and the money on the development of a 993 at that time and turn it into what is a GT1. This is a car that in race spec produced just under 600 brake horsepower compared to the road version, the Straza version of 550 brake horsepower. Their goal was to basically go and win Le Mans in 96. Now, they did achieve the goal because they won their class, the GT class, and they came second and third overall when a McLaren F1 was placed fourth and fifth overall. And the winner of the race in 96 was a sports prototype. So Porsche felt that that was a huge success. This was a hugely successful race car. It won over 10 races. It had numerous other podium finishes. We believe it's the most winningest Porsche GT1 of them all, even more so than the works cars. This particular car is chassis number 117 and was delivered new to the Bytesec brothers in 1999. The Bytec brothers are very interesting Porsche privateers. Based in Canada, hugely successful, and interestingly, they owned and ran three of the nine customer Porsche GT1s in period. This particular car, they won the Canadian Championship in 99, 2000, and 2001. Uh, they also ran the car at Daytona, and they would retain ownership of the car up until 2013, at which time the car was sold to noted collector and racer Chris Wilson. Chris kept the car for a few years and sold it to a friend of his in Switzerland, who we recently acquired the car from. This is the only Evo tub that was supplied new in Evo spec from Porsche in period. It has a 3.2 liter flat six engine that produces an astonishing 592 brake horsepower and weighs circa 950 kilos. Six speed manual gearbox with reverse and its top speed is circa 200 miles an hour. What's so special about this particular car is that this is a race car. This is a race car that has huge amount of provenance. It's won so many races. Drivers have stood on that top step of the podium. It's had bangs and bashes and raced for many, many years. And then today, it's road legal. As soon as it arrived here and came off the truck, the first thing I wanted to do was let's go. Started her up um, and found it amazingly easy to drive on the road. Obviously the conversion that's been carried out by Lanzanti, they've done a fantastic job. Uh, the restoration on the whole car actually, putting all the Daytona livery back on it. Um, the car's exceptional, it's beautiful. But 
I didn't think it would be as usable as it actually is on the road. It's a car that you probably wouldn't want to drive from one side of London to the other in, but I can't think of many supercars from the 90s that you would want to drive one side of London to the other. But if you get going in the open road, it's a very easy car. The one thing that is so obvious and evident that you can't get away from is that you are actually in a race car. You're sat there in all the stripped out cockpit and you've got less visibility than you have in a traditional road car. The turning circle we know isn't as good as a traditional road car, but it's very usable. You can drive the car, you can use it, you can do a decent journey in the car, but it's impossible to forget that you are actually still in a race car and you get that tingly sensation where you think, I'm actually at Le Mans. Well, you're not at Le Mans, you're on the M1, but you still, you still have that feeling that you can't, you can't avoid. So loud when you drive the car you know you're, you're not it's not a car for you to go and have a conversation with somebody in but it's just it is a raw race car there's no finesse about it when you put your foot down and it's shaking and you're going through that fantastic six-speed box and you can't help but blip the throttle and put your foot down and just think that you're at Le Mans or at Daytona or you're Klaus bite second period winning all those races you just can't help but just reminisce about that and imagine that you're you're there in period the turbo noise when you drive the car is so evident it's overwhelming just the whole mechanical aspects of it the on a, on a technological point of view, you can appreciate everything about it, not just the turbos, but that fantastic engine, power to weight ratio, the speed, the brakes, you know, ceramic brakes in period, uh, which were, you know, not common at the time. It is Porsche's, you know, one of their most iconic cars of all time, one of the most important cars of all time, one of their rarest cars of all time. You could definitely refer to a, a, a GT1 as a unicorn status car. That era, that 90s race car, supercar era, is very special. If you think about it, you have the F40, the F40 LM, the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR, the McLaren F1, the Porsche GT1, and to rank them, you would have to give the title to the McLaren F1. It's kind of impossible not to. But this is a car that has very similar traits and success to the McLaren F1, where Porsche modified their road car, they came up with this, and then on their very first attempt at Le Mans in 1996, they win their class, they come second and third overall, and they beat the two undisputable kings, the McLaren F1s, into fourth and fifth place. Today, there's so fewer cars, the six works cars. Um, good luck trying to get one of those. See, you have to take time to consider that there's less than nine of these cars of the privateer Porsche GT1 race cars in existence. So think of all of the amazing Porsche collectors in the world. Just Germany alone, you could say, but if you wanna, if you wanna think of all of them in the world, or all of them in North America, and there's only nine of these cars to go around, then when you drive the car and you do put your foot down or you do slam on the brakes, you realize exactly what 
you're responsible over that time. You know, you are the custodian for those five or 10 minutes or hour or however long it is of something that is very special in Porsche's history.